Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. So in the previous sessions I had covered the part 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 of the basics of CA and FEA. So I'm here with the part 6. So in this I'll be focusing on the types of analysis and the basic terminologies which we need to uh, remember while uh, giving any of the CEW. And then uh, we'll see explicit implicit analysis and the frequency domain analysis in brief. Let's get started with this. So these are the few terminologies like yield strength, what is ultimate strength, fracture strength, stiffness, hardness and resilience. When it comes to yield strength, what exactly it is? So this is the maximum stress at which the uh, material can handle. And this is a stress which the uh, material can handle before the permanent deformation. Okay, so you could see for the uh, steel the yield strength is 448 for the stainless steel it is 520 up to the strain it will withstand the loading condition it won't go for the uh, plastic region means the it is under the elastic region itself it won't go for the uh, permanent deformation okay so when it comes to ultimate strength means this refers to the uh, the maximum st stress at which uh, means it is this maximum stress before the failure occurs so this is the ultimate stress value strength so after this it will fail so up to that it will be the ultimate strength it is under the what it is it is the uh, plastic region okay up to here only the elastic region will be there remember that so this region is the plastic region now means here the permanent deformation will happen okay now the fracture stress the strength so this is the stress maximum stress at which the total failure occurs completely failure means it will be like i hope you know the universal testing machine you know, at that a uh, certain uh value you know, for the uh the rod which you have placed it will be uh broken apart into two specimens due to the shear stress okay not the normal stress because due to the portion ratio the shear will happen at the center and the material will shrink at that region after a certain uh duration of time and due to the application of load it will completely rupture stiffness so the stiffness in the sense whatever the uh the uh we can just say that this stiffness how we can define it is this is how the component resists the elastic deformation when the uh, load is applied in the sense if you consider the yield strength region up to this the resilience limit the component will be stiff enough to uh, withstand the loading whatever you are applying up to this particular yield strength so that is known as the stiffness okay when it comes to hardness so this is the uh, localized uh, stress surface deformation okay if you consider any of the steel component i think we have done the uh, some analysis during the engineering time right you can recall there are some indentation test i forgot the name of that particular instruments oh that's okay so we'll be uh, having some factors for brass and for the steel components okay we have seen now the uh, indentation test so that we can just check is with respect to hardness hardness we can say it is okay so it is uh, resistance to the uh, localized surface deformation we'll be having the uh, certain values for that we need to consider that resilience as i said it is the ability of the uh, material to absorb the energy in this particular plastic region whatever the loading conditions you are applying it won't affect the uh, model so it won't deform so it will just observe that particular values under this region okay this is the stressing curve for the uh ductile material we can say okay it has the uh, plastic region and then it has the uh the ultimate stress and the failure okay. now very important things the types of stresses we can have only two that is the normal stress and the shear stress these are the variations okay in this the principal stress and equivalent stress will help us to consider for the uh, ductile and 
brittle material analysis so I'll, I'll tell about these things later now when it comes to normal stress sigma xx sigma yy and sigma zz are the normal stress values you could see this is a stress tensor if you consider all the faces sigma zz along coordinates xyz it will solve the matrix the tensor matrix and you will get this okay and then these are the shear stress can you see these things so it will be taken into account so the tactile material will fail in this region due to this shear we'll see that now the equivalent stress and the principal stress so what are these and when we consider we'll see for the ductile materials they will fail at the shear stress maximum shear you can see this now if you twist it it will fail due to the shear and even you can consider the UGM testing machine as well it will be having certain amount of shear before it fails right the elongation will happen due to the poison's ratio it will be having the uh yield strength value other than uh, the ultimate strength value and the fracture okay so this is what the shear stress happens okay now for the brittle material the brittle materials will fail for the normal stress not for the shear stress simply you can consider the chalk here okay chalk we have seen the pencil the during our childhood fourth standard fifth standard we have used this uh paints right we didn't use that uh water paint we had this kind of chalks so so this chalk and the normal uh, lecture teaches chalk will fail due to the normal stress means if you just twist it it will directly fail okay it won't go with the yield strength uh ultimate stress and the failure stress and all simply rupture front curve fail ho jayega. okay now for this we're going to consider the normal stress maximum normal stress will be like this okay so now what exactly happens here is the principal stresses are solved okay for this brittle materials for the icon value and then these will be used to deal with the brittle materials so in short for the ductile materials we consider the equivalent stress and for the brittle material we solve for the principal stresses so in the principal stresses we'll be having the normal stress values so according to that it will try to uh, compute the results and get and it will give you the principal stress results it will solve for all the normal stresses okay now when it comes to equivalent stress what exactly here happens is it will solve for all the stresses evaluates okay all the uh, tenses we have seen now these all the stress tenses it will solve and it will evaluate and it will give you the one equivalent result on that particular phase to represent the uh, stress results on that particular phase for the reptile material so it will solve for all the stresses and it will give only one equivalent stress at that region okay this is how you need to remember anyway this equivalent stress is a scalar quantity okay uh, for shear stress it will uh, give you the values okay and simple we can define it as the shear strain energy per volume okay well so this is the explanation for the equivalent stress and principal stress so you know right the one versus stress the equivalent stress uh, for ductile material for the principal stress we consider the uh, rank and theory that is a uh, maximum principal stress theory we can call it as so here it is maximum distortion theory of the one versus stress we can consider for the equivalent stress so in short ductile material will fail for the shear stress brittle normal stress okay yeah so while solving it will take the equivalent stress and the principal stress to represent the st uh, stress results on that element well next thing for the uh, static and dynamic analysis so what are these so when it comes to static analysis load will be applied slowly and gradually when it comes to the dynamic analysis loads are quick okay like the drop test crash test and all in the dynamic analysis again there are two domains one is the time and the frequency domain the time domain we have the implicit and explicit in between we have the class static analysis when it comes to frequency domain we have the model analysis that is the frequency analysis we call it as in short so why we do it to extract the uh, natural frequencies and the mode shifts for a certain uh, values like operating let's say if you consider the operating frequency in 60 okay operating frequency 60 hertz so if you are dealing with the component which has the 
value 60 hertz itself so it will resonate so what we can do is so we can add the material we can increase the thickness or we can make all the changes into the model so that it should not have that particular operating frequency okay done so next thing is the harmonic analysis so this will help us to uh, extract the stress strain curves or we can even check the due to this particular values how exactly the component will behave so at what frequency the component has the uh, maximum displacement so that we can avoid that particular frequency and all like that we can use it for random analysis like the uh, the shock observers and the car suspensions and all these we can consider for the random vibration response spectrum for earth earthquake and all we can consider into account so for these we use the frequency domain analysis okay explicit implicit in implicit we're going to solve it for creep analysis static analysis as well and the quasi-static problems in explicit we're going to solve it for the dynamic like the impact drop test crash test in explicit the brief explanation is here so when it comes to implicit analysis what exactly here happens is so it will find the solution by solving the equation for both current as well as the uh, later one condition okay it will solve for the current iteration and it will solve for the later one as well so for the both when it, if it take only two iterations okay when it comes to explicit analysis it will calculate the state of a system at the later time from the state of the current time means it will take that value just to solve the current time so it will keep on going and finally we will be having the the final time result okay how exactly it will uh, fail now when it comes to uh, the implicit analysis so for each time increment it should attain the global equilibrium okay so this means for each and every increment it will try to converge the results so keep on doing it for safety analysis and only have seen now same thing so after when it attains the equilibrium it will go for the uh finding the global variables like the stresses and it will give you the results for that iteration and it will go ahead with the next increment when it comes to explicit it doesn't happen there okay so simply it will uh, assume that it is under global uh, equilibrium condition and it will try to solve the iterations and it will automatically assume that so whatever the iteration you have considered is acceptable and it will solve for that okay as the uh, time frame is extremely so small so here each increment computes slowly and since iterations needed to be global equilibrium means they should attain the equilibrium right so for that it will need more time so here it is not the case okay when it comes to the implicit both iteration and the convergence checking is required here it is not required in short okay this is the brief explanation about this when it comes to interviews and all in simple in implicit analysis the analysis will be solved for each and every iterations and it will uh, try to converge the results for every iteration and every increment and it will give you the uh, element variables like stresses for each and every increment when it comes to explicit there is no such things like global equilibrium it will simply assume that there is a global equilibrium for that particular rotation and it will simply try to assume the uh, iterations as well it won't uh, take the uh, certain uh, values a certain uh, increment like step by step it will uh, it will try to automatically solve it try to analyze it and it will solve that particular creation it will give you the results okay sure linear and non-linear analysis when it comes to linear you need to remember there is a linear relations between force and displacement Let's say if you're going to uh, consider the uh, spring into account the loading condition if you apply the 10 newton load it will displace on a one meter and it increases to 20 newton it will displace two meters like it has some stiffness constant the k factor can constrain you can get the results okay linear so uh, when it comes to non-linear the four gene stamping crash test about analysis and the drop test the stiffness matrix will change for each and every deformation okay so in all the physical structures practically uh exhibit the same non-linear behavior but with respect to the requirement and the application we're going to just divide it as linear analysis and non-linear analysis okay well so this is the curves the straight line for linear static analysis for non-linear it is like this so for each and every iteration the stiffness will change okay 
yep so this is the brief explanation about the types of analysis and the linear and non-linear analysis okay so that's all about this session guys thank you stay tuned bye everyone